Okay, uh, so I'm sharing the screen with you now. Okay, uh, so as you already know, when you log into RPEC, this is the first thing that you will see. Uh, as everything else in RPEC, this homepage can be adjustable by adding relevant widgets and uh, turning off the ones that you don't need. So you can basically place on the homepage the ones that you're using most frequently. Um, also, you have a book a call option, so you can book a call with us, whether it's a support call or a pre-sales call, if you have any uh, major issues uh, or any specific topics that you would like to talk about you can always use this option uh, and you also you have a chat widget here so you can always chat with our agents you can ask us questions uh, and uh, you can basically turn to us anytime that you hit any hard spots or uh, basically need any help or assistance from our site yeah. Um, also, you have this news widget here. So the news widget is actually our development team's account on Twitter. Every time that they make a change, an improvement, an update, or they add a new feature, they post about it here. So all of the new features that are posted are added to all of the users' databases. That is not charged additionally. So uh, you will be able to use it if you want to and if it's beneficial for you. So you can keep track of that here. And we usually do make updates on on a weekly level so um, you can keep an eye on that and uh, the all of the updates that we make are per requests from our users uh, so uh, you can feel free to take advantage of that or to give us any suggestions or feedback if you find anything in the software missing or you have an idea for any uh, new options Okay. Um, also, when it comes to the licenses, all of the licenses that we have in ERPAC have the same functionality. So what you're seeing on the trial and all of the modules that you see on the trial are the same for the basic standard and the premium license. So uh, in whichever way you decide to go, you will have the same functionality. So the main differences are the number of users and the database size. Uh, so now that we are done with that side of the story, uh, I just want to ask you whether you would like me to start from basically uh, building a BOM based product uh, and then moving through the process of sales, back ordering and manufacturing. Um, is that uh, something that you would like to see how it works or uh, because you mentioned that uh, Jose actually had uh, certain trials maybe you tested it out as well so I don't want to uh, basically uh, give you all of the information that you already have so yeah I'm, I'm looking at Jose to, uh... yeah we can start something right away with this or we're referring to the manufacturing we can see I don't know if something could be related with the winter part, and also if we, if not, if not the case, we can continue asking about. The, yeah. Okay. So yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. No, it's okay. We can. Uh, we can. Uh, you can. You can start as new, so as you planned, and then we can see uh, maybe at some point if we have some detailed questions that we uh, that we squeeze in. Uh, Yes, yes, of course. So feel free to stop me anytime if I need to explain something uh, or uh, if you have any additional questions, just interrupt me. And uh, if I'm talking too fast or too slow, please let me know and I will adjust. Um, so let's go to inventory and products and services to make our BM based product. So uh, this is how the list looks like. All of the lists are uh, very adjustable. So you can always go to more columns and you can add or remove the columns that you don't need. Uh, also, you can always group and subgroup the information. You have different snippets and you can color code them so they can give you the information about the product. Uh, and you have the export to XLS options. You can always export everything printed out or downloaded uh, as a PDF from the system. You can also use the filter option to double filter, triple filter the columns and get custom reports and custom information that uh, also can be printed out, emailed, downloaded from the system, etc. So I just triggered the mail option. Um, we will forget that for now and we will uh, get back to it when we go to the sales order. 
Uh, so this is a products and services list. Uh, in ERPAG, you can have more than one location for the items. So you have the warehouse list in the administration module. Uh, and uh, if you want to see the report uh, on each warehouse and stock levels for each warehouse, you would go to inventory stock list. But in this moment, we are in the products and services list, and that is where you will see all of the products added up. So from all the warehouses, you will find them here. Uh, of course, when it comes to the number of warehouses, you don't have a limit to that error pack, so you can have as many as you require. Uh, so the yeah. So when you take a look at the list, you can see that here you have uh, the raw materials that are uh, basically marked with a small brick next to the item name. So these are all of the items that you're purchasing from your suppliers. Uh, the other type of the items are the ones that have a squiggly factory next to them. So they, those are the uh, products that are uh, basically uh, based on bill of materials and you're manufacturing them in your own facility. So in the fulfillment column, if the item is based on supplier, you will see the supplier name. If it's something that you're manufacturing, you will see here the bill of materials. You can also divide them by using the product type, the product category, and the product trademark. Uh, so basically the category, uh, well, that's uh, fairly self-explanatory, but the uh, uh, trademark will basically be the brand. Uh, so you can use that as well. So the category will be, for example, sneakers, and then the brand will be Nike, Adidas, etc. Mm -hmm. um, so the first thing that you uh, that you will do is that you will actually add your materials into your pack. You can either add them manually or you can uh, import them. So you have uh, import spreadsheets in the administration module. So basically everything can be imported through those spreadsheets. Uh, so in this case, this is a raw material. The back ordering is supplier. We chose a supplier here. We can also add the purchase price. If you have any landing cost, you can add that as well and all of the other information that considers the supplier for example you can add the shipping days you can also add the minimum order quantity so the purchase order will always go to this number on default and that is useful for you if you have any discounts that you get from the supplier if you order a certain number of items so every time that you create a purchase order you will be reminded that uh, you need to order a certain quantity mm -hmm. uh, are you maybe tracking your items by serial or lot numbers? Uh, not yet, no, no. Okay, so we will skip that part for now and we can revise it uh, when you decide to start doing that. Uh, let's save this one and this is our raw material number one. Let's add our raw material number. Yeah, so sorry, just to get back to the, the, the tracking, that would be um, if... Uh, yeah, what do you understand uh, with, with tracking exactly? Uh, okay, so the lot number will be the batch number. So when uh, you are receiving those, you will be basically adding them a batch number and an expiration date. So you can always make a child to parent and parent to child reports. So you will see from who you bought the items, in which production process you used them, and uh, basically to which customer you sold them. So you will be able to track the whole line of how the item was, uh, basically how it got to your stock and and to whom you sold it I and that yeah so, but that would be um it, it can be a, a, a manual uh, a manual numbering system if i understand it well uh, yes of course so it can be manual entry increment or it can basically reflect the date on which you got it in stock mm -hmm. and uh, the same goes for the serial number but the difference is that the serial number is uh, per piece so one item can have uh if, if it's tracked by serial number, then each one of the pieces for that one item will have a different serial number. So it's unique. Uh, and it can also be manual entry, it can reflect the barcode, or it can be increment. Okay. Uh, but if you have a certain numbers that you want to have in your stock, so basically for your own reference for that, we usually use the SKU. So this is the product number or the part number that uh, by which you keep the item in stock. Okay, but if, uh, if for example, indeed, uh, we have a product uh, existing out of different parts, but if we really want to, uh, for example, we have a product category, uh, I say something of chairs, 
um, but we really want to track a specific share to, uh, or link it to a specific customer that we would do with the serial number then. Uh, yes, you would do it uh, with the serial number because that the serial number will link that specific piece to a specific customer. It will not link all the chairs. So the yeah. SKU is for all of the products. The serial number is per unique product. Okay, but then indeed, uh, I think it's something that that we will do with our especially products related to customers. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, then I was wrong in saying that we were not doing doing it so, okay uh so in which way you will choose to track it uh if we change the sku for a, an hour um serial number no serial but id number for example then the tracking should be changed manually for each product no? each chair let's say the because, sku yes because otherwise you cannot link every chair no, I, if we have a, let's say the SPU, we say that the number one is the chairs in general or a kind of chair? Yeah, so the SKU will be uh, not, chairs in, uh, not chairs in general. So for example, if I have six types of chairs and uh, each of those types has 10 chairs, then the SKU will be different for each type of chairs. But if you have six chairs and they all belong to the same type, then the SKU will be uh, uh, for all of them. So if, for example, uh, I have uh, apples in, in, in the stock, uh, then uh, I have types of apples. I have uh, uh, delicious, I have Granny Smith, uh, then all of uh, the Granny Smith and the delicious will have a separate SKU, uh, but uh, basically they will all belong to the category of apples. But if, for example, uh, you want to all of them to belong only to the apples in general, then they will have the same SKU. So it's up to you whether you want to divide it or not. But for example, if I decide to divide it, then I have 10 apples uh, under Granny Smith. Uh, the serial number for each of those 10 apples, uh, even though they belong to the same SKU, so they do have the same SKU, the serial number for each one of them will be different. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and uh, yeah, in that case, so the tracking, um, so you, you said it was uh, manual or automatic? Um, yeah, it can be manual uh, or it can be automatic. So uh, it can, well, if you choose the automatic side of things, then it can be either in the barcode form. Mm -hmm. uh, so you will be able to scan it either with your phone camera or with a barcode scanner. Uh, and if it's increment, then it will just start for from uh, 001 or um, whatever you set up and it will count uh, upwards. Okay, okay. Yeah, probably in our case, it will be a manual entry. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so then we've set up for this second raw material to be manual entry. Uh, and uh, now let's go back to the fulfillment. So the fulfillment uh, can be either one supplier or for example, it can be multiple suppliers just to make a difference uh, and to show you this option as well. Uh, so if you have more than one supplier for one and the same product, then you will change to multiple suppliers and you will get this supplier section where you will be able to add uh, all of the suppliers from which you are ordering the item. So let's say that we add those three and let's say that we add some kind of pricing. Uh, again, you can add the lightning cost. If your supplier has an SKU, you can write it down here and all of the other options that we mentioned are also available for each one of the suppliers. Um, now let's save this one. And now we can start basically, we have two components so we can make the bill of materials. So uh, you will just go to create bill of materials and choose that from your drop down menu. Let's say it's raw one plus, oops, plus raw 
to. Uh, and when you choose a bill of materials, you will get again an additional section. So in the fulfillment, I have bill of materials. So my additional section is where I will add the blueprint for the product. So you can basically branch out the bill of materials as far as it's necessary for you. If you add the component here, that means that you're adding something that is actually purchased from the supplier. If you add a subcomponent, that means that you are adding something that you manufacture in your own facility. So you can basically branch out the production process as far as it's necessary for you. And you can add subcomponents, components. Uh, the subcomponents can have their own subcomponents. So it can basically go as far as it's necessary for you. But in this case, let's add two components so I can show you the process and then we can do a deeper one if it you if it's necessary. Uh, so our components will be raw number one, raw number two, uh, and the work operation is basically the labor that's included in manufacturing the item. Uh, and you are able to add the work operations in the manufacturing module. So here they are. You can add the work operations here, uh, all the ones that are relevant for a workflow. You can add either their cost per hour or cost per piece. Uh, basically, it depends on uh, what, what are you actually... Um, by by which how you ca count actually the time, uh, whether it's uh, the cost per hour, cost per piece, uh, and uh, you can adjust the quantity. And as soon as you do that, you will get an estimated cost for the production process and the estimated amount. Uh, all of this will be added up, and it will give you the estimated cost for the finished item. So this is per one piece. In the base quantity, you can choose how many pieces you are produce producing. Maybe you are not always doing one at a time, maybe you're doing two or three or 10. So you can adapt that here. Uh, also, you can add any additional info here and that will be basically transferred to the work orders, et cetera. So if you have any kind of reference that your uh, colleagues in the manufacturing need to see, you can just type it in here. If you, if you would uh, change the base quantity in fulfillment, the quantity below will automatically be adapted, I guess. Um, yes, but in the work order. If you change it here, this is, yeah, this is basically where you just add the information. So uh, the um, parity that you add here for the base quantity and uh, all of the quantities here, it will be uh, a reference for everything that you do in the work order. So I, I will show you that once we start that one. Uh, we will also add the serial number here to manual entry. Uh, and based on the estimated cost, we can uh, add the selling price. And let's say that it's $100. Uh, also, when it comes to the selling price, you can add price tiers. So you can have different prices for retailers and distributors, or you can add the volume discount. So for example, if somebody buys 10 uh, finished items, then they will get the discount and uh, basically the selling price will be $90, for example. So you can also use those options. Okay. Okay, let's save this one and let's create the sales order. Oh, wait, I didn't ask you, are you actually manufacturing to stock or you're manufacturing to order? Uh... Uh, uh, um, for the moment, it's a bit of both for the moment. Um, okay. For the moment, uh, yeah, we've, we are a startup, so, so still growing. Uh, so for the moment, it was all, yeah, mostly for uh, purchase, uh, to, to, uh, for sales. Um, but that might change in the coming year that we produce for, to have a stock. Okay, I will show you the both options. So the minimum stock quantity is useful if you're manufacturing to stock. So you can always set up the minimum stock quantity for the item. Uh, in this database, I have two, two locations. One is main warehouse, the second one is retail. And I've set up the minimum stock quantity for the retail. Now, once I save that, since my on hand is zero, which means that I have none of the item on hand. When I go to the manufacturing, because this is the item that you are actually manufacturing and the fulfillment, uh, here is my finished item. And the system is telling me that my minimum stock quantity is 10 and I need to manufacture 10 pieces to keep up this, with the stock level that I assigned. Mm -hmm. So that is very useful if you are building to stock. 
the second scenario if, is if you're building to order. So I would go to create sales order, choose the customer from the customer profile, and let's say that the customer wants to purchase one piece. Uh, you can also set up different terms of payment for the customer. These are all added manually, so you can adjust that one. Uh, and let's save this one. Uh, so now I started in this case directly from the sales order, but I just want to show you one other perk. So you have sales quotations. So you can start from this page. So quotations will show you the opportunity stage for the customer, the forecast and the status. So basically when you go to the create and quotation, uh, let's say that your customer wants to purchase the break career and let's save this one. Uh, once you move the opportunity stage uh, from all of these things to basically close than one, uh, you don't have to retype the entire document. You can basically just go to copy to new and go straight uh, to the sales order from here. So just copy to new sales order and all of the info is there. And once you click on the save, the system will do a comparison to stock and it will tell you whether you have the quantity or not. Mm -hmm. So you don't, uh, you can start from the quotation st stage, from the pre-sale stage, and then move to the sales order. So in this scenario, we are already in the sales order and the system is telling us that we have no quantity. Now there are two ways you can go about this one. You can either click on generate and generate a work order or a manufacturing project from here. The work order is usually used for a single level production such as ours, because we only have the components, we don't have the sub components. The manufacturing project is for a production process that is more complex and also the purchase of the, uh, the perk of the manufacturing project is that you will see a branched out view of your production process. So this is one way, going straight from the generate button. The other way uh, would be going sorry. to manu- Yes? Yeah, sorry to so, um, so you have manufacturing project and work order. So in case if it, it is um, a, a product that has to be built, um, both by ordering or purchasing uh, components from a supplier and doing stuff um, in-house? Would it be a project or can you explain the difference again between the two? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, so usually the items that you are manufacturing only uh, with the purchased material, uh, they're usually work orders because they have only one level of, of production. But if you're uh, manufacturing something that's, uh, that has um, the material from the supplier, but it also has the material that you are manufacturing in your own facility, added up together, then it's usually the project because it gives you a better view and it joins all of the work orders under one project. Okay, perfect, okay. Uh, so yeah, so the other way would be going to manufacturing fulfillment and then you just check out the list here and you will see what you need to manufacture. Now for my main warehouse, I need to manufacture the finished item, only one piece because I have it ordered. But as you can see, uh, you have also the minimum stock quantity here and how you can tell the difference is that this one shows you the committed quantity. So this is the one that you need to manufacture for order and this is the one that you need to manufacture to basically maintain your stock levels. Um, we are going to create, a, a, yes, and you can create a recorder straight from the list. Uh, we are going to create the manufacturing project from here because uh, I want to show you how that looks like. And since the manufacturing project consists of the work order, you will see both in this case. Mm -hmm. So let's click on the manufacturing project. You can choose whether it's launched or planned. Let's start with plant. So this is how the manufacturing project looks like. As soon as you create it, you will see the sales order number here. And on the sales order number, you will see the manufacturing project. So they are both connected. Uh, the other thing is that uh, this is uh, only one work order, but as I said, if your production is widely spread, then you will see a tree. I think I have one to show you. Um, let's say this one, no single level let's try with number two okay this one is good so here i have a basically uh my uh bicycle that is created from the drive train and from two wheels uh, and uh, the system is branching them out 
Mm -hmm. So that's how that looks like. Uh, so let's go to our manufacturing project. So now let's, uh, and yes, basically on the bottom of the manufacturing project, you will see all of the work operations added up together and all of the raw materials added up together as well. So you will basically know everything that's included in manufacturing this product. Now, when I click on launch and launch the manufacturing project, the work order gets automatically created. And again, the system does a comparison to stock and it will tell you whether you have the quantity or not. So in this case, the system is giving us no quantity, which means that we need to go to the work order and uh, we need to order the material that is missing. So in, uh, when this happens, you would just go to the purchasing fulfillment because the material is something that you purchase and you will see all of the items that are missing so you can continue with the production. So this is basically the list of everything that you need to order. So here are raw material number one and raw material number two. Uh, the raw material number one has only one supplier but we added the shipping days. So as you can see, the shipping days here are three and the system is giving us the expected date. So today is the 5th of February, but we can expect this to arrive on 8th of February if we order it today. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is that if you have multiple suppliers, you have a magnifying glass next to the supplier name, so you can choose from which supplier you will order. And since my first item is ordered from Bike Genesis, I will just choose Bike Genesis here, so we can order everything from the same one. And then I will just click on front of those item names and create the purchase order. So now we need to receive the items. We are in the purchase order section. We created the purchase order and let's open it. Uh, every time that you see an info button next to the item, uh, next to the item quantity, you can see where it's allocated. So in this uh, case, we see that we need it for the work order 29. When you click on the receive button, this is where you will actually uh, type in the serial number. So we didn't add the serial number for raw material number one, but we did add it for the number two. It can be an alphanumeric field. So you are able to type in the serial number. Uh, also, if you've set up the minimum purchase quantity for the raw material number one, you can of course always retype it, but in this case, let's uh, leave it be and let's pause the document. Uh, now we get a good receive note. We can see the serial number and this is the moment when we receive the items when the items are actually placed to stock. The next step would be going back to our work order and now we can see that we have available quantity. So then uh, now uh, my question for you would be, are you planning to allocate uh, the work operations to your employees? Do you want to track time for them and to assign them work operations or this is not something that you will do for now? Uh, no, yes, we, we, we do that, yeah. Okay, uh, so for each one of the work operations, you can choose which one of the employees is included there. So I will choose the Nolan Peterson for the first one and let me add myself in the employees list because I want to show you the uh, how the mobile app works. Save it. Uh, and now let's go back to the work order. Let's see if it refreshed. Yeah. So Nolan Peterson is the one who is assembling and I'm repairing. Um, also, what is important to remember that you have the plan time. So the plan time is one hour each, but you also have the realized time here. Uh, now, since the estimation of the cost, the one that you added on the product level uh, and what actually happens in the production can be different, you can choose how your stock price will be followed. So it can be either manual entry, it can be estimated cost, or it can be actual cost. Uh, my advice would be to always go with the actual cost because the estimated cost will only reflect the 55 that you presumed that you will spend for the production process. But if anything changes, then the actual cost will be your best reference. Mm -hmm. And I will show you now how that works. So let's save this one. When it comes to the planned and realized time, there are three ways you can go about this. The first way will be just type in the realized time. 
type it in on the record level. The second way will be using the mobile app or the tablet device. So if your employees uh, have uh, mobile phones that they are using in the production process, or if you have a supervisor who is using basically a tablet, uh, you can log in the times for your employees. So this is my repairing here. It's assigned to me and I can just start counting time against that. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, basically, if your employee has a mobile phone, then you can use this one and just count the time here. Uh, but if your uh, supervisor has uh, basically uh, a tablet, then he can either count the time for each employee or basically each employee can just go to the tablet and uh, mark that they started working on the production process. Mm -hmm. The second way would be going to the manufacturer. Yes? Yeah, sorry. So in, in that case, um, um, in that case, all the employees working on the, on the, on the, uh, on the, yeah, in the system, they are different users. Yes, yes. So but either in, in case we work, yeah, as you said, in a, with a su supervisor system, um, and we say that the supervisor is in charge of, uh, yeah, of keeping track and so on, it, we can see him as the only user, but can we, can we, can he be the only user, but keeping track, track for different employees? Yes, of course. You will add him as a user and you will add the employees in the employees list here. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, so that would be the first way. The second way would be going to the manufacturing timesheets and you will see the list of the employees here. Mm -hmm. And basically, open each employee. Mm -hmm. Hello? Is basically included and... Uh, Sorry, because your the, the last few sentences dropped. Did she lost me? Okay, great. Hello? I'm, hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, you're back. Okay, great. I don't know what happened. Let me share the screen again. Uh, okay, so as I said, you can always go to the manufacturing timesheets. You can see the list of all of your employees here, and you can see all the work operations that are assigned to them. So I can see that the uh, poor Nolan Peterson has a fair amount of the work operations. Uh, he's realized and planned time match, so his current effect is 100%. Uh, and uh, I can start his work on the assembling here and count the time against it. Mm -hmm. So it will basically, yeah, show me all of the lists and based on this, you will see uh, how your employees are doing. Uh, so now when I stop all of the uh, counting time here and when I do the same on the uh, basically timesheets here, uh, the system will uh, log that time to the work order automatically. So when I go back to the manufacturing work orders, I can see that um, my realized time is actually changed. So uh, as you can see, Nolan Peterson wasn't really hard working. He wasn't working even for one minute. So my estimated cost is $20, but what actually happened is that I needed 0 0.07 cents for Nolan Peterson to complete his work. Mm -hmm. And here is where uh, we will see the difference between the actual and the estimated cost. Okay. So now in this step, uh, the next thing we need to do is to load the material. When I click on the load the material, uh, this is where I get the chance to choose the serial number that will be loaded in the production. And here is actually the step where you pull the items from the stock. And then the next step would be to deliver the finished goods. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I can see that our Zoom link is about to 
a break because uh, we've been talking for, I think, 45 minutes. But as soon as that happens, I will send you an additional Zoom link and you can log in so we can continue, okay? Okay, perfect, yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, now we have to type in our serial number for our basically uh, finished item and uh, post the document. So this is actually the time when we place the finished item to stock and our work order is completed. And once we've done that, we would go to the manufacturing project to complete that one as well. Okay. And we go to the last step, uh, aka to the sales order, and uh, we can see that we have available quantity for the sales.